Well, we've got the election coming up to me in the UK. That's going to be a really interesting one this time, isn't it? Um, I think probably the most confusing election of my time, as far as I remember. Um, I've been into politics from a very young age because I studied politics when I was in college and then again I did my bachelor's in politics as well. Uh, but this is probably the most confusing election I've ever come across. People who want to stay in the European Union, um, well, I myself personally was anti-Brexit. Um, but if you're pro-Brexit, then you have plenty of choice. I mean, you can obviously vote for Conservatives and also the... Uh, well, the Brexit Party, I think they're calling themselves now, used with the UK Independence Party. Um, I know I know there's still two different parties before you start criticising in that one, but the, the leadership I'm talking about. Um, however, if you want to remain in the UK, it's a little, a little bit more confusing. Sorry, remain in the UK. I keep saying UK. I mean, remain in the European Union, uh, then it's a little more confusing, simply because, uh, well... There's no single party which is saying that we will remain. Okay, the, the Liberal Democrats are saying that we will remain, but there's two issues with that. One, they've lost the trust of many people because of what they did in uh, with the student fees. They promised that they wouldn't have put student fees up, but then they got into bed with the Tories and basically put up the student fees. Second problem that we have with the uh, Lib Dems is they're not. I don't think they're a big enough party. Um, I know they're probably the only party right now that are saying we'll cancel Brexit. So anybody who's a Remainer doesn't really have a choice because Lib Dems probably won't win in their area. For example, I'm from Manchester, and in Manchester they are not going to win. It's just it's just not going to happen. Uh, the, the best thing, op the best option that we have if you are a Remainer in Manchester is to vote Labour, but Labour's got their own issues. Labour's got plenty of issues. Jeremy Corbyn can't make his mind up about anything. I know there are many people who are arguing that, okay, uh, because people voted, it's democracy and that's how democracies work. You know, um, if, if people have voted to leave, then we should leave. But in democracy, we also live and learn. We actually learn from the mistakes that we've made. Um, there are many mistakes that we've made and I think one of them was voting for Brexit. I think we should actually go back, revisit this one, and have another vote. Having another vote is not actually against democracy. It's in favour of democracy. It's, it, if anything, it will actually support the original argument if Brexit, if people vote for Brexit again. Um, I mean, the referendums, in the UK we don't really have that many referendums, but if you look at another country such as uh, Switzerland, where they have on average 45 referendums every year, uh, why can't we have more than one referendum on one issue? Especially when there's such a big divide within the country. I think we need to look into that again, and maybe we can uh, come to a proper solution for this problem. And I think a second referendum would be ideal. Historically, governments always call for uh, a early election when they were very confident of winning the election. Um, therefore, they wanted to improve the majority that they had before anything went wrong. Um, and we saw that before with uh, well, John. Uh, sorry, I was going to say John Major, Tony Blair, and uh, obviously uh, we had uh, Margaret Thatcher who did that a couple of times as well. But this time we've had Theresa May who called an early election and actually reduced her majority um, and then now we've got Boris Johnson who's doing exactly the same and it doesn't look like he's going to get any more seats than he already has in fact he might lose them but his obviously his, his reason for calling an election is different uh, because he wants to try and uh, basically force through Brexit and say that you know he, be, uh, a no deal Brexit even is worth the whole uh, chance but if the no um, the pro uh, euro party such as the lib dems and the greens win the elections or get uh, a large increase in the number of votes that they get paired with labor stance of not favoring uh, brexit or staying neutral even Staying neutral here or abstinence can be taken as a re as a rejection of what uh, the Conservatives are offering right now. This will lead to further divisions in the country or lead to further confusions in the country because 
Labour simply have not straightforward said that they will be anti-Brexit. Another thing that people don't really understand is that no party has ever been in power with more than 50% of the vote of the total electorate. I don't mean 50% of those who voted, but actually the total electorate. The last time that this happened uh, was in 1935. Uh, even when the, the Labour Party in 97 got into Parliament with a, such a large majority, you have to remember that they only got around 25% of the vote. Uh, what I mean by how it's worked out is that the turnout was around 58%. Out of those 58%, um, uh, only 42% uh, voted for the Labour Party, which means they got around 25% in total. Now, um, you're thinking, how the hell did that happen? Simply because of this, the voting system we've got. We've got the first past the post system. In the first past the post system, what happens is the person who comes first takes the seat, and whoever comes second, uh, all the votes there are basically useless. The, the, the person who came second can lose by one vote, but the, those people will have no representation because in the first past the post system, uh, when I say they don't have any representation, I mean they don't have any representation in the actual election, uh, but uh, they have representation as in the person who wins is their member of parliament for that area because the constituency. Um, Therefore, there's, there's an argument that maybe we should have uh, more of a proportional representation like they have in Germany. Uh, but then, coming back to the elections that are going to take place on Thursday, we're only a few days away now. Um, I will try and do a bit of an update on the elections on election night as well. Um, but coming to the elections, I don't think it's going to solve anything. It's going to cause more issues because I don't see a clear winner right now. Uh, there's no clear winner in terms of the majority party. The majority party will not be the Conservatives, I don't think. The Labour Party may give uh, the Conservatives a run for the money, but as I've said before, Jeremy Corbyn is undecided. He has no idea what what the electorate wants, or maybe he doesn't have an idea, but I think it is a personal affiliation. Personally, he was uh, pre, uh, pre the before the uh, referendum, he was in favour of Brexit. Now, because he's realised his party are not in favour and the only way he's going to get any votes is to actually not back Brexit, especially this kind of hard Brexit that Boris Johnson wants. So, in order to appease the voters, he's sitting on the fence, but sitting on the fence isn't going to appease anyone because at the moment, in most people in the UK are either pro-Brexit or anti-Brexit. And I think the majority are now anti-Brexit, uh, simply because of the way things have gone over the last few years. Now, the only way to actually stop Brexit from happening uh, in the way that Boris Johnson wants, because we've had apathy in the past. We've had people thinking, oh, what's the point? My vote isn't going to count. What's that going to do? And we have that in the referendum, and that's why we actually... Well, Brexit actually won. Uh, it went through. Um, however, the only way to actually stop Brexit now is to vote tactically. Just like people voted in 1997 to get the Conservatives out. Now, you have to look in your area, in your, con in your constituency, and see which party is most likely to win that seat. So you have, even if it's Labour, and Labour Party, like I said, in Manchester, that's where I'm from, Labour has this, um, uh, basically Labour is not uh, pro-Brexit, but they're not anti-Brexit either. So, but the thing, we'll sit on the fence and we'll let the people have another go and uh, let the people have another, another say, uh, which is better than what Boris Johnson is saying, because if, if we follow what Boris Johnson is saying, then well, we're just going to have a hardline Brexit without... Well, it's just going to lead to chaos. And I think it's going to lead to everything getting a lot more expensive in the UK, the pound becoming weaker. Um, and as you can see already in the news, the, um, uh, the, the British government are basically selling out p patient data to um, American companies, which means that they're getting ready for Brexit and they're also getting ready to, to uh, cut ties with Europe. Um, but it just means that you become dependent on the US, which is going to cause a lot more issues because... Uh, at the moment, you have a say in the world. 
you have a say as an independent um, country. But if you're relying upon the United States and the special relationship that you have with the United States for everything, you will not be able to hold your ground on issues which you do not agree with um, on the, with the United States. So, if, for example, if the U.S. is to go to war, uh, I know the U.K. normally hasn't been going to war with the U.S., but in certain cases, such as Vietnam, the U.K. didn't. Um, so you would more or less be forced into that war if the U.S. called for a war and simply because you were so heavily dependent upon the U.S. in terms of the monetary, uh, in terms of the fiscal policy and the, and the monetary um, reliance that you will have on uh, the U.S. Uh, right, so um, I'll follow this up. I'll, uh, there'll be another vlog, hopefully, on um, Brexit, uh, or on the elections, rather. And the Brexit and elections at the moment, they're like this. You can't separate them. So um, I will uh, post another vlog on um, another vlog on um, election night. All right, see you guys then. Oh, by the way, remember to subscribe, please. When I said to an American friend of mine that, uh, ha ha, you voted for Trump, he turned around and you know what he said to me? Uh, at least we can get rid of him after four years. You guys voted for Brexit. Look, I know I'm not living in the UK and I'm living in this heat uh, in the Middle East, but the UK elections still affect me. It affects my prospects of when I go back. It affects my fat friends and family. Um, so obviously it's going to be something that's dear to me. So I'm really, really looking forward to what happens on uh, Thursday, uh, the 12th, uh, so we can see who takes power, takes control of the UK. This has nothing to do with the elections, but I just had to show you the sunset. As this sun is setting, I'm hoping the sun is also setting on the idea of Brexit. Let's hope.